I'm finally doing it. I cannot believe how long <laughs> it's taken me to do this, but I'm finally doing it. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, it's about time. I should have never learned about this technique, okay? I should have never learned about it because this is the reality of it. I learned that I could freeze my tomatoes until I have a massive batch to then do my spaghetti sauce. But the problem is I took advantage of yeah, I took advantage of, of putting it off, but I can't put it off any longer. So let's go, let's go make some sauce. I probably should have started this video with, uh, hi, my name is Kaylee, and I'm really good at procrastinating, and yeah. <laughs> my grandma came to help. She's gonna help chop up tomatoes for us. <laughs> look, look at this. Okay. And then I put all the good stuff in the bowl so I can load it. All right. Gosh, it's incredible. Yeah, I'm not too too worried about doing a flash, a flash steam on this because when they're frozen, what I liked about it is you can essentially just the skin just peels right off. This is a small one, but anyways. Oil or use lard on the inside of your pans so that nothing will stick to the side. It'll make your cleanup a lot easier. Um, but once we get it in here, then we're gonna put them in the roasting pans and let them let them cook up and uh, add some seasoning. And I'm really excited about this. I have been craving homemade spaghetti sauce for a while now and I've been slacking. I had to run downstairs in my my pantry area and grab grab some lard. Uh, that is an easy thing to do if you guys ever want to learn how to uh, to make your own lard. It's probably one of the easiest things to do. I, I prefer to use lard over oil um, but oil is fine if that's what you have. But I try not to waste, I try not to waste anything from our pigs. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work raising pigs. And the way I look at it, if you're going to do the work and raise your animals, use them, utilize them to the best of their capability. And the trick, drop it on the ground like I just did um, nothing's wrong with it I just might not add it into my food but lard is also really good for dry and cracked cracked hands so see nothing goes to waste <laughs> I, I, I got nothing I got nothing here but <laughs> on a good note my hands are gonna be very silky and smooth. I don't know, I don't know how to turn off my camera. <laughs> okay. Hmm. 
Very smooth. Very smooth. <laughs> so yeah, use <laughs> use the products that you have. Use your if you're raising the animal and if you're doing everything that you possibly can to to utilize and appreciate the animal that you raised. Um, don't forget about rendering down your lard and turning it into using it, incorporating it. But the big thing is, is just do the rim. Do the rim where, where the tomatoes would sit so they don't cook. Um, and then you're left with a, left with a massive mess. Trust me, I'm only telling you from experience. Look at the color of all of these tomatoes. So these are, this is the pork chop tomato. Uh, and then our Dr. Witchies are really orange. And then I've got a bunch of, of purple, purple boys, beef steaks. So far, that's pretty much all the waste that we have. And then here's the, here's gonna be, um, so far this is, so far this is pretty much, this is all the waste that we have. And here is the sauce that we're gonna put in the, so far this is all the waste that we have. And then this is gonna be bowl number two that we get to put in the roaster. I'm gonna get my immersion blender and blend this all up as well. I actually, I don't mind having a little bit of chunk in here, so when we blend this up, it'll, I'll leave a little bit chunky. But this is, this is gonna be exciting. And then these, this one we're gonna use for the stewed, the stewed tomatoes. My fingers are cold. I don't know about you guys, but. Well, better cold than scalding hot. Yeah, I'll tell you what. This I prefer really... scalding hot. I don't care. Mm, mm, mm. So you like the old, old school, old school way? Yeah, I mean. We got a lot of stuff going on in the kitchen between our spaghetti sauce that we've been making, and then also my husband has been uh, smoking some some pork belly to make some bacon. So we're getting ready. I'm I'm shifting from making making spaghetti sauce and stewed tomatoes to now slicing up some bacon because it is done and oh my goodness. This is getting me pretty excited about BLT season.
Not bad. Not too salty. Mm -mm. Mm. Okay. We have a couple of bellies that one is a little bit thicker. Okay. So we're trying to gauge during our curing process. Timing wise, this belly was a little bit thinner. So we wanted to make sure that it was washed a few times uh, during the curing process so it didn't get too, too salty. But not, not bad. And it's making me want BLTs. Perhaps. Yeah, that is a real thick. That is gonna make some. A thicker belly. I'm excited. All right, let's try that one. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who might be interested in our in our process of curing and and doing our our, our bacon, don't worry. <laughs> I do plan on showing you that. I have a lot more pork bellies that are in the freezer that we're going to be doing. This was our second go around, and so before I wanted to like just show you guys and teach you guys kind of what he has learned. I really want to like, I know he really wants to kind of get it mastered um, before we start sharing that with you guys. So that's coming. Um, I'm still learning that, that curing process. And I'm very excited about what's gonna, what's gonna potentially be happening in our, in our barn shop um, come this next, come this next year. Hopefully, we're going to be offering or hosting a few people to come in and do some some workshops uh, for for pig processing as well as as well as curing and making the the special cuts like prosciutto and and all of that. So that's coming. I did want to tell you guys that though because I know everyone's going to be like, show the bacon, show the bacon, and yes, yes, we will show the bacon. I just want to make sure that we have our recipe. Uh, down to a T before before we start sharing it so that you guys can do it too but I told him last night that he was speaking my, my love language with with all that bacon so I sprinkled some dry herbs in our spaghetti sauce and a lot of people ask what what herbs do we use so I am a old-fashioned I like marjoram basil rosemary thyme oregano savory and of course some sage so I'm gonna let that cook down. Maybe taste it, add some more seasoning. The stewed tomatoes, I'm not gonna do anything to. We're just gonna leave them as is. So yesterday with our tomato making and our bacon making process, I ended up just putting the camera down and enjoying my family. Um, sometimes it's good to do that too. Basically it didn't mess much. My husband and I vacuum sealed all of the, the bacon. We did about a pound and a half because we have about seven people here and uh, put that in the freezer and then the sauce we ended up just letting it cook low and slow and my mom and i did decide to go ahead and and take the the one smaller roasting pan and and combined it with our the bigger one um instead of just doing stewed tomatoes and and spaghetti sauce we just decided let's go ahead and do just do all all of it as spaghetti sauce um added some seasoning which i did share that with you guys now we're gonna water bath uh, normally i pressure cook but water bath actually works just fine with tomatoes you just have to make sure that you have uh, add a little bit of acid to it which we added uh, some lemon juice um it smells amazing my whole house i woke up this morning and it just smelled absolutely amazing just one thing that i really love about about this life and and what we do here my mom and i are going to go ahead and load up our we're going to use our pressure cooker but just a water bath instead of pressure cooking so this pot is full of water and if you are adding hot, hot jars and hot sauce you're going to want to make sure that your your water is hot too so that you won't accidentally crack a jar so we're going to load this up it smells so good i wish there was a way that youtube could could uh, insert smells because my whole house smells like bacon and tomatoes. <laughs>
pressure. some water off. You're only going to want the water over top of your your jars, maybe about an inch. Yeah, inch, inch or two or at so. the most. But I always, I'm always really bad at estimating <laughs> until I get the jars in. I'm like, oh, too I much. Have Not enough. a whole foot of water extra. <laughs> I think this is fine. All right, so this is going to be about 45 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and, and keep the temperature between medium and high. And then uh, I'll put the lid on. I think that's fine. But I'm not going to seal the lid. I don't think we're going to fit one more. Yeah. All right. This just is going to be... Just rest. Just rest on top. Where's the arrow? I'm not cranking it down. Okay. Then it doesn't matter. Nope. So these two I'm keeping out. Um, we're just going to put them in the refrigerator and have for dinner tomorrow. And then I'm going to water bath can these four. These four quarts. I can probably tell you we're going to need to take water off the top of this. Probably. Again, I have a heavy hand. I've accepted it. Child, everything you get, you get it honestly. Well. <laughs> so finger tight, not too tight. Each jar has about two tablespoons of, of lemon juice in the bottom. Okay, I'm just gonna drop in. I think, look at that. Yeah, dead good. Now we gotta no, add No, we water. actually have to add water. See, you're making fun of me. I am. Put vinegar in the water. Yeah, this one has vinegar in it. Did you do it to the other one? Yes, too? I did. Adding a little vinegar to your, your canners um, help keep your jars nice and shiny and clean. Uh, our water is so hard, so sometimes when we when we do any canning, the jars themselves get this like... Milky. Milky, milky film. Um, right. So vinegar will help that. Ouch. All done. This is gonna last our family for about three months. <laughs> Maybe. No. <laughs> We're gonna be doing One, more. Two, three, four, five, six meals, seven and then meals. There's two more out there. Eight, we got eight meals. The biggest thing that we've learned is to make sure that you put your put your jars on, on something like a towel um, so that they don't the temperature change doesn't doesn't crack the crack the jar and there's a few different ways I've seen people that will flip their jars upside down um, to until it's completely sealed I 
haven't done that, we've done this method and mm -hmm. it's it's worked fine, but I can understand why. I can understand why to go ahead and flip them, but I think this is just fine. So anyways, thank you for coming with us on this crazy two day adventure between tomatoes and bacon. Tomatoes and bacon. Yep. That 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 says a lot for this for this family. <laughs> it does. <laughs> and and as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. And learn something old. Bye guys. Bye.